tech rabbit here. So continuing down the path of creating the um, 10 gigabit network. So the next one of the phases we need to complete is to install a 10 gigabit NIC in the workstation and then um, check that the SFP um, module that I, for the fiber works. So. Um, well, what I'd just like to point out that these these um, cards they're usually for server use. So um, there has been there are several instances that when you put this in a in a normal PC or workstation that um, there you start to um, crash and don't work the way they're supposed to. And um, <laughs> the the one main thing that one has to take into account is that um, if you have a normal PC, you don't have the same air forced airflow as you do in a server. So basically this is built on the on the assumption that you actually have forced very high, like usually in servers you have very high forced airflow flowing over this heatsink and, and out again. So um, when we put this in and start using it then we're going to have to actually um, see if we need to add an extra cooling fan for this here. Or whether our load or my use case loads will be so low that um, it, it will actually survive with this. So th this depends on if it starts to <coughs> exhibit um, instability. Also, these SFP Plus modules they um, they do also have a tendency to heat up quite a bit, so they they consume quite a lot of power, especially if they're uh, fiber optic um, versions, because they have lasers, so they they um, tend to heat up a lot. Of yeah, power, and then you know, part of the power goes to losses. And <coughs> so anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to, um, yeah, document the installation of this, and then we we'll boot it up, and yeah, and um, then we'll see which SFP Plus module will work. Uh, yeah, connecting the fiber optics, and just check that the whole system works as intended. So let's get into it. Well, now it's time to install the actual cord. And it has to be a 16 PCI slot, times 16. So, if we go to fit OK, good clearance. I'll put it next to the fans for the graphics card so it gets some blowing on that, not on direct on the heat so as I said there is options to think about installing an extra fan like here to blow the air through it but I'm only going to actually have one S SFP module so it might be that it's gonna run cool enough And um, yeah, that's just to put everything approximate together again and um, see if we can get it to blinky blinky. So, anyway, um, the work card installed. A ah, temporary for testing, I'm using a one gigabit SFP plus module. Uh, wired so it will be changed to a fiber optic. But we just want to check that the, <coughs> that the card is recognized that it accepts the module. It should because this is HP. I hope it should work. Yeah, and I got a mouse and keyboard. So let's see. <laughs> Had the case open for a while and then the airflow stopped over the neck. <laughs> Even if it's not, even not even connect to the network, it <coughs> seems to get quite hot. Ah, we'll keep an eye on that. And then after this event, you get events about like the yeah card failing, the, the device driver starts failing and starts complaining about firmware and all kinds of 
uh, not relevant issues. So this is the first error that happens is that the card overheats and it shuts down internally. So let's have a little look at the uh, <coughs> driver situation. So the driver, if you search for search for the driver on the internet, you usually end up with some on some driver site um, where the driver package has this name. <coughs> now this driver package um, actually. Um, Contains drivers for many different um, uh, network cards, not only the one that is being installed. And um, the last desktop driver that it provides support for is um, Windows 10. So, you don't, so in my case, I have Windows 11. So um, the way I've been handling this is I've been installing it using the device manager action add legacy hardware to install the driver so let's have a little look at that so anyway here's the device manager and as you i've already installed the driver so it activated itself and then yeah I, <laughs> like i showed in the um short video bit that the um the card has uh, because i opened the yeah like a said I op opened the case and um, and the airflow was reduced over the card and then the card overheated and then it deactivated itself so that's why you have the um, driver here with comment with these error triangles but uh, that's just to reboot the computer and it'll, it'll clear it but anyway when you want to install the driver and you use I got it on my other display so that's why I'm looking sideways to add legacy hardware. And I will try and share that window also. So here we get the set dialogues. And I'll say next. And then uh, hardware you select manually from the list and then you just continue. And then you say you have disk. Oh. And then I, I can't show the dialog where you select, but you select the folder where you've extracted the drivers to. And then you say OK. And then here you, you see you get a long list of different um, uh, drivers, and the one to take is that one. And then you just say next, and um, I, I won't do that since I already installed it. And. Um, the one issue that I came across was that, um, and and the thing is, I'm not sure if this will happen to everybody, or is it just because my Windows 11 is not, um, it's not a vanilla installation. It's actually upgraded from Windows 10, and it's had crap loads of software installed and uninstalled. So it's it may be that it's not an issue, but I got an error. This operation requires an interactive uh, window station. <laughs> so I did some Google researching, and um, I actually found different uh, lots of information about this from like six, seven years ago, which is uh, in about the same time frame as the drivers have existed. And um, uh, basically, it asks you to do procedures to. Um, take ownership of, of certain driver related uh, folders and change permissions on folders and um, uh, then also uh, you may need to manually copy f uh, files based on information you have in the log file. Since I'm not sure if everybody will even see this I, I'm not going to make a, a long rant video about this but but I, I think that the the procedures that that people have identified to do is basically to try and restore Windows 11 back to what it was, back to the configuration it was for the drivers, uh, like six seven years ago, on Windows 10, um, so that the actual installation procedure of the driver using this add legacy hardware will actually work. Uh, because I think the, I mean, definitely Microsoft has tightened down on the um, 
uh, both the ownership settings on, on system folders and the access rights on files in those folders so for security reasons. But what I've done is I've uh, copy-pasted a, a yeah, or written a description in the comments of the video if you'd like. If you actually see this error and you, you want to try and uh, fix it for yourself, it's um, purely at your own risk. Um, I don't think it's recommended to do it. Do these procedures from Microsoft, you might end up with a security vulnerability. Uh, and if you mess it up, then you might actually screw up your Windows 11 installation. So, um, yeah, your responsibility. Take it, take it carefully, and, and consider if you would actually like to do this, or maybe you'd actually like to go out and um, get another adapter cart, and not, not use the one that I'm installing. But as I said, the, my experience so far is that the drivers do install, they do activate, <laughs> then, then they die when the card overheats. <laughs> Which is kind of interesting because I, I haven't got SFP modules installed in it yet and it's not running traffic. So, so the, But I, I do understand why it heats up because it's only got the, the heat sink on it. And um, if it hasn't got airflow over that heat sink then I think that it will get warm pretty fast. So. Um, and I have discussed that well, I might want to add a... Um, I might be actually adding a, um, a fan to it. Yep, so the SFP module will be tried first. Um, doesn't work, but that's not surprising. It's not um, listed as one of the SFP modules that should work. It was just one that I happened to have lying around. And, and I had two of them, one which is um, marked HP Enterprise and one which is marked HP, and, uh, but they're still not of the type number that um, is said to be compatible with this card. So I've, I've actually ordered um, some SFP modules that are compatible, but I, but I think the the basic installation is, um, is done now. The, the card's in place, the drivers are installed, drivers activate, so I'm actually um, quite confident that um, when I get the correct S SFP modules then they, it'll just start up. So. so anyway, if you thought this video was useful, consider hitting the uh, like button. Um, consider subscribing if you want to follow up on, on further, because this of course I'll be integrating this card into the workflow of the back in 10 gigabit backend. And um, yeah, if you want to support the financing of these activities, then consider buying me a cup of coffee or buy me some merch. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.